Alaskans take pride in their newspapers. Traditionally, they've reflected the hopes and dreams of a new state. For some, a voice for change, and for others, a community conscience, and also a way to preserve what makes Alaska Alaska, and joining us now to talk about the importance of newspapers, Michael Carey, one of the most trusted voices in Alaska journalism, Edgar Blatchford, a champion for rural news coverage as well as for Alaska Native coverage. So thanks, both of you, for being with us. We just want to say one thing, that this is being recorded on Friday morning and Friday afternoon. There's a bankruptcy court hearing. We could see developments, and if you want to find out about those, go to our website, ktva.com. But anyway, can the dispatch be saved? Yes, uh, although it, it's a, obviously a formidable challenge this is Friday with the, when we're recording and the bankruptcy court will be attempting this afternoon to work out some kind of plan uh, that the creditors are willing to accept to handle the creditors and keep the newspaper going. Uh, my own sense is that the creditors can only get paid if, if the paper continues in some way because the assets to be sold, um, what are you going to get for a 30-something year old press that uh, has no role anymore, or very no. limited. It has a role for the Anchorage Daily News or the Dispatch. It doesn't have a role for anybody else in Alaska. So, what's at stake here for the state, Edgar? Give me a I think you know what's at stake is that someone has to be watching the store. And I've said this many, many times in my classes. Is that, and Julie O'Malley puts it quite nicely. Is that someone has to watch what's happening in the local government level. You know, if you look at the Anchorage Assembly meeting going on, very few people in the audience, no one, re no one reporting what is happening mm -hmm. out there in the real world unless you have someone who presents himself as a media person. And then you look at the small towns in Alaska, someone has to be in that audience who's going to tell other people. It's, it has to be much more than just rebroadcasting the actual meeting. It has to be an interpretation and an analysis of what's on the agenda, what is at stake for local people. And we need it in this state. Well, Michael, one thing I'm curious about is, you know, everybody has a unique relationship to their newspaper in whatever community you live. But because, you know, we're a new state, relatively speaking, we're so isolated. Do you think that our relationship with with, uh, you know, the biggest newspaper in the state is more intense? Well, people have intense feelings if they get the New York Times in New York or surrounding New York or they get the tabloids in New York. Um, but here there is, you know, has been a declining number of people who get the hard copy of the newspaper delivered at their house at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's a limited number. It's about 30,000 now, I'm told. Those people, however, are people who feel very strongly about the paper. They enjoy it. It's important to them. And a good example of that is how upset people were when the dispatch eliminated Saturday delivery, Saturday home delivery. People called up and it wasn't, they were really disappointed. You hurt my feelings. A woman called up and told a story about every Saturday morning, she let her, seven days a week, she lets her dog out to go down to the end of the driveway to pick up the newspaper, and now the dog is, is near tears or dog <laughs> tears because dog there's, no, trauma. No, there's dog trauma, no newspaper to pick up. So what the, the woman did is at night she would go down there and put a fake newspaper in a bag <laughs> so the dog would have it on Saturday. Think of that. Well, that is a, a strong relationship. But, you know, I, I want to just uh, uh, talk about Alice Rogoff a bit. You know, the only official word that we have from her is from a statement and she said, I simply ran out of my ability to subsidize this great news product. Financial realities can't be wished away. Now, is, is this a little too little too late? <laughs> I, I think Alice did a, a great job and she made a great commitment to journalism in Alaska at a time when we really needed great journalism. But you know, the need for great journalism doesn't stop now. It continues on and on and on. And I think that as uh, you know, we see changes with oil prices and changes in Arctic climate you know, conditions that we need to be watching what is happening around the world. And well, we need to put Alaska in that spotlight, keep it Alaska in that spotlight. You know, we did see kind of a blossoming of rural coverage and certainly coverage of the Arctic. Now, how did that compare to the high water mark of the Daily News, when, you know, when they were in their heyday? Well, the, the Daily News 
uh, covered the Arctic, uh, and it didn't have a section that was called um, the Arctic, and we didn't have a, a reporter in Bethel, like we're maybe part of the time we did, but um, it was a priority for the Daily News, and it won a Pulitzer Prize for its coverage of rural Alaska. And people in peril. Yeah, and, we, and there were just more, more journalists in the newsroom to cover all kinds of things. Um, but this is, it, in this environment, the Binkley's, the new owners, came over to the paper the other day and said, uh, said many nice things and get, made a good impression, I think, an honest, frank good impression. But they also pointed out, Ryan Bink, Binkley pointed out, there are only two ways out of this. We have to generate more revenue or reduce expenses. There are no, no alternatives. Now, one of the things that we've heard is that, it, you know, if the Binkley's are, accept, are successful in buying this paper, that the, they want to bring in Jerry Grilly. Uh, who was a former publisher of the Anchorage Daily News? You know, what do you think about that? Is it, he's well, been Jerry's very successful. Jerry's already there. He came. He came in. Uh, he was at that Monday meeting and introduced himself to people and introduced himself once again to his old friends like myself. Uh, I Jerry Grilly is one of the most competent newspaper people I've ever been around. As a publisher, he did an excellent job, and. Uh, I guess I should stop singing hymns to him, but he's a very good, he'll do a very good job for them. But I, there was, there's not an intention that he will stay. He's a stopgap, an anal analyst to help them figure out what's working and what's not, and probably, you know, where, where efficiencies need to be made. Well, Edgar, you've been a newspaper owner. You've had several and, and have been uh, invested in the Alaska newspaper chain, which folded now, what are your thoughts? You know, how does this uh, sort of resonate with you? When, when I looked at the Anchorage Daily News and the Anchorage Times, we always looked at the two newspapers, the two daily newspapers, as kind of like the big brothers who kind of oversaw what was happening in Alaska. And, you know, if uh, things got a little too hot in these small towns, you know, you you would kind of... Uh, hope that someone from the two largest daily newspapers in the state come out and assist us and kind of uncomplicate these complicated issues because they had the staff. And, you know, when I first got into the newspaper business with the Seward paper, now we had a staff. We had a staff of maybe eight or nine people in that small town of Seward, but it was a good business to be in, but times were changing fast. And when I look at this, you know, and I, I look off into the future and I and I say this in my classes, is that Alaska is an incredibly wealthy state and we have to watch what government does and we have to watch what outside interests want to come in and take from Alaska. And let me just make that final point here, Rhonda, is that corporations don't come to Alaska because they like standing on the north slope and facing the wind. They don't go out in Bristol Bay because they like getting wet. They go there because it's an opportunity to take something out of Alaska, and that is the profits from their investment. So. And so that's kind of something I think that, that we will always be up against. You know, there are rumors that uh, Morris Communications, uh, which also owns the Alaska Journal of Commerce, is exploring uh, buying, or, or not buying, but just kind of creating a newspaper out of scratch should the, the dispatch go away. I mean, what do you think about that? Is it possible to start a well, paper from scratch? I'm not quite scratch? sure how that would work, but they've got enough financial problems, both here and in other parts of the country, um, rather than take on additional ones that would be highly speculative. That's what that would be, that kind of adventure. And Morris Communications would know very well, when you're in the newspaper business, the one thing you're doing for sure is spending money. Yeah, let me just add that to, uh, my, let me add this to Michael's comments. Getting involved in a newspaper is entirely, it's speculative. You know, uh, A and I, uh, Alaska Newspapers, we went head to head with Nancy McGuire up at Nome, the Nome Nugget, and we lost out big time. Because Nancy was such a trusted figure. She was a trusted person that in Nome, Alaska, you have a newspaper tradition. The Nome Nugget is an excellent weekly newspaper, but it is very challenging to start a new newspaper all over again. So what happens next, do you think, Mike? Well, the is there a plan, way out of the woods? Uh, well, the, the <laughs> Binkley's plan is to uh, get this bankruptcy uh, proposal approved and to finalize the purchase, pay the money, become the owners, and continue down the path they've gone, which is to say we want to run this newspaper and 
make it the best newspaper we can within the parameters of not only does Alice not have unlimited money, Alice Rogoff, we don't have unlimited money. That's right. You know, all of the players that could come in are probably not going to have that kind of money to work with. So. And it, if you're losing thousands of dollars a day, I mean, that would have to be something people pay attention to. All right. Well, I want to thank both of you, Edgar Blatchford and Michael Carey, for giving us some insights. And we want to leave you with a look back to 1977 at the Anchorage Daily News. And the footage you're about to see comes from a show called Alaska Review from an episode about the newspaper's financial struggles. Apparently, you know, some things never change. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.